Hey guys, I just wanted to go over a couple of tips on this uh, FSM from Mercury, the fuel system module. And it's not as bad as you think, so don't be intimidated by it. Um, there's another good video out there. A guy did a great job, and I'll, I'll add his link in as well. But I was just going to th throw out a couple tips that I ran into to help you guys. So this thing's on the front of your motor towards the boat, at least on the 90 horsepower Mercury EFI 2011 four-stroke. And it's at other places on other boats, but here's a couple of the tips. This thing was, um, it's obviously got the pumps in here and I'll show you those in a minute, but it's got two bolts here. And I actually, my bolts were incredibly stiff for some reason. Boats in great shape. I don't know why they were so stiff. I felt like I was gonna shear them off, but be careful. And you technically only need to get this one bolt out. Luckily, you don't have to get the bottom one out. That slips right off the bushing. This one actually slipped off the bushing and then I backed it out carefully because mine was so frozen I wanted to get it loosened up. So thank God you don't have to get the bottom one because the cowl's covering that very well and it's not easy to get to. The hardest part were these um, crimped on clamps. I forget how you say it, Odeker or something like that. So those that actually was the most difficult part. It was on this water supply line. That's the water supply line for the cooling system to cool the fuel. So I actually did order these and I'm gonna put it back to factory. I'm sure you could use a hose clamp, but that's the hardest part. The rest of this is super easy. You got your harness. You only need to get out one bolt really, and then you can wiggle it out. These things pop, this is like a vacuum hose and I always hit them with WD-40 and then I pried them up with one of these things so I don't hurt anything. These are the clip-on plugs, the clip-on plugs. You push the button well enough, there's red and blue ones. Just take a picture before you take it apart. And if you push the button, you know, enough, it's going to slide off like nothing. So I was actually using a tool just to get in there and make sure I pushed the button well enough. I use a screwdriver, nothing complicated. So once you have this bad boy off, literally 10 to 15 minutes at the most, it's not that bad. So don't be intimidated. You're going to pull it out and you're going to have your high and low pressure pumps. Now here is your high pressure. Mine actually had an engine fault from vessel view and it complained about the, um, it said, uh, what did it say? Uh, fuel pump, a uh, fuel lift pump electric timeout. So here's my low pressure. This is the smaller, the shorter of the two. And this one pumps all the fuel into this box. And then the high pressure obviously pressurizes it for the injection. So these things are, you know, pretty easy. I, I bought a seal kit just to be safe and I'm kind of doing everything. I decided to do it all at once, even though I'm only getting one complaint on one pump, but I don't want to go in here twice. So I ordered brand new pumps. I ordered them from highflowfuel.com and I got them for $220 for a package of pumps, both pumps in their wall bro and a regulator. And I bought this clamp on Mercury. And I also decided to get the float. And just so you know, the float's right here. This thing only comes out one way. It fits in here real easily. And you gotta push these little clips. You can push them with a little tool, but be careful. Just push those uh, clips gently to pull it out and that'll back out. So those are a couple of the tips. Um, I'm gonna, I bought, like I said, the seal kit, new pumps, new regulator, and a float switch. I just didn't feel like screwing around. And this float switch is so simple. I don't think I'm having an issue. You can actually take this apart and look inside. Nothing in there but a, a little barrel with a magnet, I believe. And this is easy to test. What you do is you put your continuity tester on there and it'll show continuity when it's in, um, the upright position and then when it's triggered obviously float it up with fuel it will disconnect and show no continuity so that's yeah so did i say that right i hope i did let me double check it for you um i'm gonna stick these in here real quick and double check it but um actually i was continuity when it's down when it floats up it goes off continuity in this position when it floats up, it goes off. It obviously floats up, it, it disconnects the current and tells the pump to shut off. So that's that. And you can pop this apart if you wanna clean it or something, but mine was pretty much flawless, but um, they're saying that it's been updated. So I decided to buy one anyway. It's about 75 bucks if you look around for an OEM. So I just wanted to give you guys a couple tips. Um, it's really not that bad. Go ahead and tackle it. It's definitely a do-it-yourselfer. I think, you know, if you're pretty comfortable with it, these have some strainers in them and stuff like that. You can take out and clean. This one had the high pressure has a removable strainer. This one you'd probably have to clean by pumping something through it. And I bench, bench tested both my pumps. They both worked, but this one didn't sound that great. Um, so this is the one that, that threw the fault. So we'll see what happens after I put it all back together. But 
hopefully um, that's the issue and I don't have something else going on. I obviously check your tank and your fuel lines, et cetera. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, give me a holler and I'll put that link to the other uh, video in there. Thanks guys.